we move on to the last session, session six. It's a very important lecture coming up. I'd request uh, Dr. Rajesh Malhotra to kindly stay on to chair this last leg. And uh, joining him are the organizing chairman, Dr. Viveka Kumar, uh, Professor Colonel Chandrakarsh Roy, Vishish Seva Medal, and Director of uh, Medical Education and Research, Admin Coordinator of Cardiology at Max, and uh, Dr. Vivek Kumar, Consultant Cardiologist at uh, Max Super Specialty Hospital from Saket. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to invite for the next 15 minutes to deliberate on future of heart failure management in India, unmet needs and prospects, Padma Bhushan, Professor K. Bilkushan Talwar, Chairman Cardiology, Max Healthcare. Professor Talwar, please. Good evening, everyone. I'm sure all of you must be very saturated with the, the discussion which is going on since morning. I like to just focus on, I will avoid uh, what has been already talked and repeated, but just to emphasize that the heart failure is one of the most common, most disabling, most deadly, costly medical condition encountered by a wide range of physicians in both primary and secondary care. I think we look at the unmet needs which I sort of uh, visualize one is prevention of heart failure. We need to be very sort of, I think, educate our society that heart failure can be prevented and if you take preventive steps. So various comorbidities which cause heart failure, if you timely take care of that, I think it should be helpful to prevent to a significant degree the occurrence of heart failure. Of course, the treatment in primary care we know the limitations, availability of expertise, availability of medication at the primary care. So many people, I think in the rural area, peripheral area, may not be having, having access to a bigger hospital. So we need to develop a good primary care uh, program in our countries. Of course, the appropriate use of drugs, cost, compliance is an issue. Appropriate use of devices, I mean, there are, uh, I mean, I'll come to it briefly. And then availability of, of surgical treatment when required because I think large segment of our population probably may not have access to the surgical procedure which have been mentioned, which can be very useful, uh, even to some extent, even treat some patients of, or even cure some patients with heart failure like valvular diseases. Care of end stage heart failure patients with no definite option, I think we don't have any kind of home care program. We do have now for cancer patients, but I think for end stage heart failure, we need to have those kind of possibilities of use of M health options for follow up treatment. Well, this was mentioned about comorbidities. I think all, we are all aware that we need to be very, uh, I mean, we can take care of these problems effectively. We can prevent occurrence of heart failure. Now, let us look at the, uh, which are the future options? Uh, what are something which may be coming in the next five, 10 years, which may change our practices and to help uh, some of these patients, which at the moment we are not able to. Some new drugs which are coming, new devices. We heard about total art, artificial heart, Albert, but bagel stimulation devices are another option which has been, these are being attempted. Extended cardiac transplant aspects, I'll leave it to because we had a, already a, top, a lecture on transplants. Then one area is of the myocarditis. This is one area I think which has been, we have a knowledge for quite some time, though we need more and more data on this, but this is one subgroup of patient where specialized therapy may be helpful. And of course then regenerative therapy, genetic, stem cell, and tissue engineering, another future hopes. If you look at the drugs, I think now we have interest or Biomeda that we have today or um, and then Ibabradine, Sildana. These two drugs have certainly helped uh, in our practice that some of the patient which were other we were not able to handle probably are helped by these drugs. Sildenafil, trimetrazine, then uh, sorry, new diuretic, tolbeptan for patients with hyponatremia. And these are the other drugs which uh, I think have been mentioned in this small, but we don't have any different data for effectiveness of these drugs. They are used sometime, but the scientific data is not uh, there to really support that. 
I'll just briefly mention about Ibuprofen because this is one drug. No doubt that uh, after chef trial, we know for tachycardia patient who are not tolerating beta blocker, we may be sort of using it. But this drug also has been found to be well tolerated and helpful in decompensated heart failure patients where we can't use beta blocker. Even with heart failure, with preserved ejection fraction, with tachycardia, you can use ibuprofen. And even heart transplant patients where they have a post of tachycardia, I think this is another good drug. And uh, because beta blockers are even they better than the beta blocker in this subset, the recent observation do indicate. When we come to the devices, I think our CRT, we have talked about or Albert, I will just mention about when we talk why very less devices are implanted in the country. Because that's the challenge, that's the unmet need, that we know that many patients with the broad cure as CRT may be helpful, and, uh, but the reason is that uh, I think physician factors, patient factors, and procedural benefit, some patient may not be responding. If you look at, unlike the Western setup, large part of India is covered by unauthorized coags, other physicians uh, who are from different system, and uh, they need more sort of knowledge advocating their uh, education so that they understand that heart failure and current therapy. But people are not very much, many fish may not be aware of this and this is one exercise I think Dr. Viveka which is was to educate uh, our colleagues. Of course sometimes physicians are not aware of the benefit of ICD or CRT. The one factor which I think we cannot ignore is the cost. Because our patients only hardly 10% of the population may be insured, but most people have to pay from pocket and that's very difficult. These are very expensive to spend so much money. And uh, recently some of the device company had started loan like that someone can pay in installments and can have a sort of a device and pay in a sort of a every monthly kind of see. I think we need to have some kind of more option to help that subset of patient which cannot afford these devices. Of course, we know also that in CRT non-responders and they may be because various reasons, but now we have new, I mean, new kind of leads or understanding which area should be paced and to re sort of uh, reduce these non-responders. This is another area which has been in, in the sort of um, uh, experimentation for the last over a decade or so. That was the neuromodulation or vagal nerve stimulation. We know that heart rate variability, heart rate turbulence, heart rate barrel reflex sensitivity, they are suppressed in heart failure and people who have this have worse outcome and this only shows low vagal tone and high autonomic tone, uh, sympathetic tone. Now, if we can stimulate the vagal tone and can maybe we can help these patients and this was the uh, and by various kind of stimulation by pacemaker to the cervical vagal nerve, intracardiac vagal stimulation, uh, carotid sinus cord, I mean spinal cord stimulation. But what is the outcome? Initially, I think two years back, it was uh, presented in European heart and anthem heart failure. There was some improvement, but I think the last two studies, the nectar heart failure and innovate heart failure, which have been, innovate has just been published. Uh, the nectar has been published just only a few months back and it shows that there's no significant improvement by pacing, by increasing the vagal tone. So I think we need to have probably some other ways how we can increase our vagal tone to sort of uh, have the benefit of in some of our patients. The when then group comes the DCM, which is not a small group. I'll see in our practice, younger people, middle-aged people, they come with dilated cardiomyopathy. And I think uh, there has been attempts that can be give them, apart from the standard therapy, like patients who may, most likely they possibly have a viral infection, viral myocarditis. So whether antiviral drugs may be helpful, immunosuppressive therapy, or those who are end stage, then the question of regenerative therapy comes. Now, as far as the viral myocarditis, I'd like to just share, there's a shift in viral spectrum. We, when we are studying, they were only that either is adenovirus or atentrovirus, which are the cardiac active viruses. But now, most of the studies show that it is the parvovirus 19, which probably is the commonest causing myocarditis. And uh, so apart from these, even influenza, mumps, and hepatitis C virus may also cause uh, myocarditis. 
Now, question is, I mean, this is that the, in the European society is a standard guideline that every patient with a DCM-like picture not responding in the first three months or so should have endomyocardial biopsy. Because that is the only way histology or immunohistochemistry, there are different criteria. You can diagnose myocarditis and you might also study PCR by viral antigen if it is positive or negative, which might help you for managing these patients. Now this is just the biopsy. So at day, I mean, though it's a, I mean, uh, it's recommended that immunosuppressive therapy may be helpful in patients with giant cell myocarditis, eosinophilic myocarditis, cardiac sarcoidosis, or lymphocytic myocarditis. More than three months or so, if a patient has not responded, or six months, some people say six months, they should have immunosuppressive therapy. So these are some of the area which are under notes, the, like the check study which is going on. Um, so I think these data do indicate there may be space for this kind of a therapy in some of the patients which do not respond to the standard therapy. Of course, an antiviral therapy, I'll say the proof is limited, but there is a German data to show that those who are viral positive interferon beta therapy may be useful. Parvovirus, uh, telbibudin therapy is under study. So these are some new area which are coming in the next few years, I think we may have more data. So I think any patient with heart failure on standard therapy not improving for next three months, I mean we have ruled out underlying coronary heart disease or any other cause, should have a biopsy, inflammatory myocarditis, look for viral antigen, PCR positive, PCR negative. PCR positive, give some standard therapy, not responding, do add antiviral therapy. Patient which are viral negative, antigen negative, apart from standard therapy, do give immunosuppressive therapy. And those who are inflammatory negative and if you have a viral antigen, they should also maybe benefiting from viral antiviral therapy. So these are the kind of area which are under evaluation. I am sure we may have more data to have more convincing thing. This is a data that in PGI when I was there, we tried to look at our autopsy specimens, patients who had died from delayed cardiomyopathy. And there were 20 patients. We found that out of that, five patients has a positive viral antigen and about eight patients had a myocarditis and uh, most of them the positive was of parvovirus in four and I think one only has adenovirus positive. So I think this is an area I'm unfortunately the facilities, the labs for studying viral antigen are limited in our country but we need to develop these kind of things if we have to help these kind of patients. This was in, I mean, in 92 we, we published our data for immunosuppressive therapy in myocarditis and I think uh, we were not doing a viral antigen study at that time, so, but I think significant number of the patients who responded to therapy improved in LB function. These are some, I'll skip these slides. So then comes to the end stage patient, the regenerative therapy, that's another area of, I think, extensive evaluation, and uh, we'll see what happens in the next five to 10 years, cytoskeletal regeneration or stem cell therapy. Now, this is the psychotic myocyte cardio, uh, architecture, I won't go into more into this, but we try to look to study the cyclos, uh, cyto, uh, cyclo, uh, um, cytoskeletal proteins in the myocardium in patient with DCM. And this was mainly because I think LBAD, some of the patient whose LBAD could be removed. This was thought to be that the, the, uh, the cytoskeletal proteins have improved. And so that is possible that uh, because some people could recover. So that is the reason this was a 10 patient of biopsy data indicating in some the dystrophin is, uh, for A is uh, normal looking, B is little also normal looking, but three ulic is a very faint dystrophin, four is more faint, indicating that dystrophin has been destroyed in these muscles. And probably if you sort of uh, have some medication which can regenerate these, that may be another kind of a targeting therapy in these patients. And so this was, uh, I'll say that there is increasing evidence for secondary changes in dystrophins and even titan in the heart failure patients. Studies have shown the selective disruption of decreased expression of amino terminus of dystrophin in patient end stage uh, patient DCM and cytoskeletal proteins, particularly dystrophin, could be a target for new therapeutic strategy. You see, when we talk about trimetazine as a salt, we talk about coenzyme Q10 as a salt, these may be kind of drugs which are, have a regenerative property to these cytoskeletal proteins, but I think we need to have more data. Similarly of stem cell, I think all kind of uh, main 
a work has been from the autologous stem cells, that is from the bone marrow, mononuclear cells, then large data came mainly for the acute MI patient and LB dysfunction, how does it improve? But uh, I think this was also a study done in the country. Uh, this was a multi-center study, six centers were involved, 250 patient patient were taken, 125 given on monolithic cells, another 125 not given. This was published in the Journal of ICMR, AGMR a few years back. These were the six centers uh, which were involved as a part of this study group. And what was found, I think uh, we didn't find any significant benefit in the LB dysfunction. There were like 7% increase in patients who were given mononuclear cells and only 4% in those who were not given, which was not statistically significant. And if you look at the studies from other places also, I think observation or result has been varying. And most of the study probably did not show any significant benefit with these mononuclear cells. But there has been some trend that showing that there is some improvement in the LB function. And this study from the European Science Congress, I think Cardiology Society, is going on using autologous uh, adult stem cells, which is a BAMI group, phase three trials. I think recruitment was to be over by October 2017. I'm sure it must have been done. And then the next two will know the mortality benefit with this particular therapy. So these are things which are, I think, uh, uh, are sort of, uh, maybe uh, we may have sort of a more kind of observation and some of these therapy may prove useful for the patient. Stem cell in DCM, a non-ischemic cardiomyopathy. This was a study published from um, uh, my colleagues from Ames and they did show uh, s uh, sort of convincing, uh, not data, but there was maybe some benefit. A, and a randomized study was going on. I don't know, I mean, uh, at what stage it is today. I thought Seth will be here to tell, but probably he's uh, left. Then I think we should not, also not be blind to other alternative therapies. And this is the one drug which from the Ayurvedika is Arjuna. And I think uh, this was in 2002 or three. we thought we should uh, look at this drug scientifically. Because there is some data indicating this may be helpful in patients with heart failure. We took a grant from DBT. I think by that time I had to leave Ames. And then but my colleagues have done some experimental work. And uh, so this is uh, probably another, I think uh, the uh, 100 patient data had been published from Ames. And that showed that there may be clinical benefit but as far as the LB function did not show much improvement, we wrote this, I mean, for a review for uh, one of the international journal. So I think these are another option, be as, uh, I think, uh, 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 sort of a concerned with heart failure, we should be looking at and open to uh, the idea. So if I had to just uh, conclude the unmet needs, I'll say the uh, preventive aspect, hand, the uh, proper treatment of comorbidities, and then escalation strategy, that if the, this is not responding, some patient is heart, not responding to routine drugs, send to higher center. More in, I mean, uh, more relevant investigation, whether he needs a trans surgery, whether he needs a uh, other kind of devices, they should be considered. And of course, non-respondent ENCRT is another group, which I think uh, probably some of these patients with the new technology, we may be help to help them. I'd like to conclude, uh, heart failure is a huge, epidemic problem uh, around the world, but thus it's a significant problem. There's an effective implementation of preventive strategy even at primary care level which may help it. Optimum access of the available expertise and affordable therapy is one challenge to us, how we can to our large uh, sort of population, we can uh, have uh, create this kind of access. Of course, then uh, are the new things, inflammatory myocarditis, diagnostic challenges and the immunosuppressive therapy or antiviral therapy or uh, the more data is required. But I think we need to develop uh, facilities or our, our bigger centers to uh, sort of evaluate uh, these kind of technology. Vagal stimulation therapy, the pacemakers have not helped. Probably maybe some other way that we can increase vagal tone may help these patients. Neo drugs uh, may come. Home-based care for the end-stage heart failure, of course, I think the country has to invest into, encourage, fund research activities in regenerative therapy, stem cell therapy, or other regenerative options, including artificial heart to repair. I think this is another area which is coming. I think uh, recently there was an article that they have prepared a heart, artificial heart, which could be 
put over the dead heart in animals. So I know things are, what's going to be in the next decade or so is interesting. And thank you so much for your patience hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Tarbar, for the chairman's comments. data that I present, presented to you was being in, injected in the coronary, but I must say even the data which are injected into the muscle, cardiac muscle, the data again, there is no convincing uh, data to show that they really improve. Uh, whether it's a paracrine effect of that, that is stimulate some kind of a hormones. And so I think this area, both on the surgical side or on the, maybe the lab side, there, there's no clear data. Even about the cells. Mesenchymal cells came that may be very good alternative, but even now we know the mesenchymal cells are no better than the uh, mononuclear cells. Because mononuclear cells at least they come from your own body and there is no issue of uh, availability, no uh, processing issue, great processing issues and as well as any kind of a reaction. No, I think this uh, uh, European study because this is, I think, a medical follow-up. This will give us, uh, suppose we find that there is a benefit in this study, this will certainly, that maybe benefit may be small, but maybe it's a good benefit. So I think we need to have the results, as well as then now other kind of stem cells, like progenitor stem cells, you may take a biopsy piece and then uh, uh, culture the sort of uh, stem cells. But these are the area which uh, Rajneesh uh, are, I think, uh, maybe, Next some years we may get more kind of uh, information. See, uh, Rajneesh, this was the 2003 or two or three when I just, uh, I took a project from DVT, both for the experimental work, doing, trying to get the extract of it and trying to, and they say Arjuna also varies the kind of plant. We were told that Arjuna plant trees which are in Gujarat, they have, the, that bark is more effective than the other places. I mean, that was the observation by one of the Ayurvedic person. But you're right that we should, and now these, these uh, Arjuna capsules are available, both from, I think, Dabar as well as Himalaya. And, uh, but the, some clinical data is also available from AIMS, 100 patient which has been followed and has been published. The clinical benefit is not, is there. So I think if people are taking, but my only uh, concern that we should be open to these kind of things. If somebody comes that he has uh, used that kind of therapy, is helpful, we should be open as a, uh, sort of medical uh, 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 scientist, you can say that we should be open. There may be something that we should be uh, can sometime helpful. Cardiomyopathy, and if we are able to isolate that, and we can work on making a, a vaccine for cardiomyopathy or something like that. Well, as far as there are uh, the viruses, which is today, these are sub because these are the data, this is insignificant data, particularly from German groups, uh, that every patient who has a like a DCM should have a biopsy, and they always do viral antigen study. Only thing the labs, which are good for studying, are limited. And the commonest virus, virus is now parvovirus or maybe um, uh, the Coxsackie virus which we used to say they are less common. And the attempt is that if you have viral antigen positive and the load is also large, probably antiviral therapy may be helpful. And this has been, there are reports available, with case reports, positive viral antigen, patient may be very sick, maybe for transplant they gave antiviral therapy and patient improving. But we need to have more data. But uh, these are the areas somehow that in our setup, in our country, we have a very limited, even in AIMS, 
I tried for the virology people to set up a proper lab. In PGI we tried, but there are very few people who are expert in this area and trying to invest. But I think this is one subgroup of patient in heart failure, they, this kind of a therapy may become a, a kind of a reasonable them to help. Any questions, please? Keval, your comment on heart-lung transplant. <coughs> six months, I would, rather than dying today, I would get heart and lung transplant done and then die after six months. What would you prefer? So, I don't know which, what is that? So.
Thank you, Dr. Vega. I think as far as patient with heart failure, I think one thing is important, uh, a proper evaluation in the way that what is the etiology. And ICO today is very useful for that. Like sometime patient with may have a significant mitral regurgitation, you may not be visualizing that. And uh, so I think that is one. Of course, any patient which is around 30 plus, you should also do a coronary angiography to rule out underlying coronary artery disease. Younger patient than that probably is more of a myocardial unless they have a rheumatic. So a proper evaluation is number one. As far as therapy goes, I think today we know that three drugs which do help to improve survival, each patient should be given a beta blocker. Even a asymptomatic LV dysfunction should have the benefit of ACE inhibitor and beta blocker. And then, of course, you may escalate to, if need be, the mineralocorticoids. Of course, when they go on to symptom, diuretic and all that, they are only symptomatic benefit. Now, if a patient, you find the reaction fraction is not improving symptomatically, maybe a little better, but if you have a wide QRS, that is the patient you must refer to a center where possibility further like uh, evaluation for CRT kind of thing should be done. And I think, of course, uh, if um, uh, the, our colleagues also, when you find that uh, this is not helping, patient is progress into heart failure, I may be called stages A, B, C, D. If a person is entering into C stage, therapy is not helping, going to D, you must think of a transplant or LBSS devices if they can afford. We should be also open to the newer drugs which are coming, like um, uh, now the Vibad, Ibabradine, what kind of patients can be helped. So I think uh, uh, look also at uh, reversible diseases in heart failure. I must say that like sometimes we miss aortic stenosis. Sometimes tachycardia induced cardiomyopathy, which is not you know, younger people, not uncommon. Patient may be tachycardia persistent around 120 or so. It may be tachycardia which might have caught DCM. And if you evaluate these patients, if they have any particularly PJRT or any tachycardia, you may think of ablation, which might give him cure. Uh, sleep apnea is another issue that I think you should be aware of. It can also cause. So I think a proper evaluation, then therapy, escalation of therapy as to go up. Of course, that should be the way. Uh, you should not hesitate to send a patient to any other place where he can get the benefit. I think Viveka, this is the way I will feel that, but uh, sometimes cost issue becomes in our country, 80 percent of the patient have to pay from out of pocket, which is a, a one concern I think sometimes people cannot afford these kind of therapies. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Talwa, for that uh, excellent presentation and the chairpersons for chairing this last session. Ladies and gentlemen, before we draw the uh, curtains close, uh, the academic deliberations of National Heart Failure Summit 2017, may I request uh, our organizing chairman, Dr. Viveka Kumar, for the final words. As I said that every good thing has to come to an end and we had an exhaustive session right from morning till now, we demonetized the heart failure, we looked at the options of changing the heart, that is heart transplantation, we looked at the artificial heart, we looked at the assisted heart fail devices like LVATs and BIVATs, we looked at the revascularization strategies and revolutions in the armamentarium of pharmacotherapy like ARNI, Ivabradine and beta blockers and ACE inhibitors and so on and so forth. So this is still, there's so much of discussion on heart failure the whole day long, but still we feel that we have not a simple solution. So it sim says that it is a complex disease, it needs a teamwork, and it needs many more things, and probably we are still not fully equipped to, you know, deal with this disease. So we would be, you know, looking for newer therapies, and that is why we will continue to meet again on the same topic next year, and we will discuss in, in, in next one year what all new treatment modalities has come up. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Talwar and uh, my colleagues who have made to this meeting and has you know, done wonderful job in supporting uh, this meeting. 
all the faculties who gave wonderful talks and did justice to the topic and you know everybody had a take home message from different topics i must you know i'll fail in my duty i if i don't uh, compliment uh, my colleague dr vivek who has been you know who worked and dr rajender who have worked you know endlessly and to to you know uh, get the program into real shape and i was very very particular that you know we should finish start and finish the whole program in time and the credit goes to none other than our anchor mr padman navan who came all the way from cochin to help us in this so uh, everyone who is you know sitting in the hall and those who gave lectures and went away uh, apart from that we had you know my support team uh, rajkumar m rajkumar who is my secretary and ea and the travel team sv dreams all of them did wonderful job but however good you are in your work there'll be always some deficiencies and i would sincerely apologize if there is any <coughs> deficiency in any you know even if the right from the time schedule to taxi to stay uh, but definitely your feedback will be very welcome and we would uh, you know soon next year we'll be doing the uh, another meeting on that note i would like to thank all of you once again from bottom of my heart and thank you once again ladies and gentlemen as an old saying in the kathopanishad goes shanaksha kanashashchaiva vidhyamardham cha sadhyet ajaramarat pragyo vidhyamardham cha chintayet the translation means every minute in the life is an opportunity to learn and age is never a constraint you've had an excellent academic spectrum for the last couple of hours on uh, this National Heart Failure Summit 2017 we hope you would have enjoyed each and every moment of this high octane academic fiesta we hope you would have enjoyed each and every moment of this high octane academic fiesta as much as the organizing committee has burned the midnight oil to bring you the best as dr viveka kumar the organizing chairman has said we'll reassemble once again next year to give you another update on the happenings in the arena of heart failure so until we meet again thank you bye bye and take care have a safe journey back and uh, impending next week is uh, the christmas coming up and happy new year 2018 ladies and gentlemen uh, this is one of the rare and few congresses wherein post congress we have got a wild get together that's the cocktails and dinner which would begin from 7 pm this evening so please stay back enjoy the warm hospitality of the organizing committee amidst the chill winter of delhi thank you very much ladies and gentlemen it was a pleasure hosting you